earthly wisdom can foresee every possible situation which might have to be faced. It's therefore impossible to have a constitution which can settle down all the situations of all the times. For standing the test of dynamic nature, the constitution has to adopt itself to changing needs and times. That's why the provisions regarding the amendment has been incorporated in the constitution itself. There are three methods of amendment in constitution of India. Amendment by simple majority, amendment by special majority, and amendment by special majority plus ratification by half of state legislators. While the first method of amendment is an easy method, the second method of amendment is somewhat rigid. The third type of amendment is indeed more rigid type of amendment. It has been incorporated for granting more protection to the federal features of the constitution again as the possible unilateral attempts of the union to change these for its own advantage. The power to initiate an amendment to the constitution lies with the parliament except in one case that is passing a resolution requesting the parliament for the creation or abolition of legislative councils in the state. Here also, the parliament can either approve or disapprove such a resolution or may not take any action on it. Major part of the constitution can be amended by the parliament alone, either by a special majority or by a simple majority. Only in few cases, the consent of the state legislatures is required, and that too only half of them. The constitution does not prescribe the time frame within which the state legislatures should ratify or reject an amendment submitted to them. Also, it is silent on the issue whether the states can withdraw their approval after recorded the same. The process of amendment is similar to that of legislative process. Except for the special majority, the constitutional amendment bills are to be passed by the parliament in the same way as ordinary bills. There is no provision for holding a joint sting of both the houses of parliament if there is a deadlock over the passage of a constitutional amendment bill. On the other hand, a provision for a joint sting is made in the case of an ordinary bill. The variety of constitutional amendment methods reflect a mixture of rigidity and flexibility. Commenting upon it, Dr. Ambedkar observed, I quote, the Constituent Assembly has not only refrained from putting a seal of finality and infallibility upon the Constitution as in Canada, or from making the amendment of the Constitution subject to the fulfillment of extraordinary terms and conditions as in America and Australia, but has provided a most facile procedure, unquote. KCVR has admired the variety of amendment procedure contained in the Constitution of India. He said, this variety in the amending process is wise but rarely found. According to G. Austin, the amending process has proved itself one of the most ably conceived aspects of the Constitution. Although it appears complicated, it's merely diverse.